We're heading off to do some dirt road riding in preparation for the upcoming BMW GS Safari in April. We do need to get through the boarding bits first, so what do they say? Don't ride here when you can ride here. But part of the journey is really on good roads as well as providing the opportunity to ride through some great scenery on our way to Wollombi, which will be our first stop before breakfast at Laguna and then onto the dirt. Where did they come from? Well done, Dad. So, Dad and I have just gone for a bit of a ride this morning, just to stretch the legs before we go back to work on Monday. Now, it's a beautiful day. It's only about 25 degrees, supposed to be about 30. Uh, great little road, you know, nice and twisty, not too busy, which is fantastic, good one for the bikes. Um, now, Wollombi was established about the 1800s. Uh, and Wollombi actually means the meeting of the waters. Now it's uh, noted for some Aboriginal artwork, so it is quite a historical, historical little place, bordered by the the Yanga River and the National Park as well. So that's where we are. Now, one thing that's always fascinated me about this little place, obviously, as I said, the artwork is uh, quite quite nice to look at. You know, you'd, you'd see things like lizards and and wombats and kangaroos and so. Uh, check it out and we'll make sure we take some photos. And while we were there we caught up with one of the locals and had a chat. So here we are, it's Gail's award-winning jams and pickles. That's correct. And there's Gail. Hi Gail, so how often do you come here? Um, the first and second weekend of the month. Second, is this all your own produce? Yes, it's all my own. Wow, fantastic it's all, it's all isn't it? All gluten free? Yes. Do you live in this area? I live about a half an hour away. Right, up towards Cessnock. Okay. Yeah. It's just such a beautiful area, isn't it? Oh, it's gorgeous out here, yes. So I believe there's a caravan park here as well, is that correct? Well, it's off the Wallenby Tavern. It's their property and they have an area off there that people can bring their motor homes and camp and it's all free. All free? Yeah. Fantastic. You see the old church? Old church, really? Yeah. Oh, cool, look at that. St. Michael's Church of Wollombi. St. Michael's Church of Wollombi. Beautiful little building, isn't it? Mm. And then the call of coffee and a nice hot breakfast had us back on the bikes. So although we visited Wollombi, we're not staying there for breakfast. We're going to head to a place called Laguna, which makes the best bacon and egg rolls you can imagine. Here we are, Laguna. Cafe open. That's what we want to see. Taking the only shade there is. Lockdown here. Why is Jonathan always the wise one? Okay, so we are at Laguna. We always call it Laguna, but it's actually called the GNTP. Yeah. Roadhouse, I think. Roadhouse. And why are we disappointed, Jono? So the reason why I'm disappointed is we came here for the famous bacon and egg rolls, um, but unfortunately we discovered that they are only available over the weekend. Uh, obviously it's Thursday, so we walked in or walked in to chow down and told sorry boys the kitchen's closed and tears ensued. So we had uh, a very nice sandwich as a, a second place um, meal, which was very tasty as well, so can't complain. And we were told a bit of the history of, of this place, been around since the 1800s. Um, this is Rose's Kitchen, which as I said, they open up on the weekend. Uh, this whole place is packed and they cook steaks and lamb and chicken, seafood, the whole shebang. So it's a great little spot to come if you're driving through. Very tasty food, great atmosphere. And look what we have here. So clearly they are catering for Motorcycle enthusiasts. Yeah. What is it? It's a BSA. BSA. Yeah. Beautiful. All right. So we're going to go and wet down our jackets. Yep. Aggressor cool minus ones. That's it. They're okay. We're going to need them, and we're heading up the Finchley Check. Yep. In the Yango Forest area. Yep. Should we go? Let's go. So this map should give you a bit of an idea of the beautiful kind of terrain that we are riding through. How beautiful is this, Jono? It's amazing, hey? Right out in the middle of nowhere. Hey, man. 
And it's not that hot, it's just a nice cool breeze. Yeah, yeah no, it's nice. Beautiful riding. Yeah. And we're on the uh, Finchley track, hey? Yeah. Oh man, this is just gorgeous. There's a bit of a donga coming up here, Jono. Okay. Yeah, I think major. And here, I think keep right a bit. Bit of sand. Oh, it's quite a steep hill to decline. Alright. A little bit of a challenge. Oh, sand at the bottom here, Jono. <laughs> you alright? Yeah, just went off. <laughs> hey? Just went off the side. <laughs> that seems to be your party trick. No, I know. That's right, I'm back. What happened? No, I just, I couldn't cut back in. So I was like, oh look, there's a, a little rest ramp. I'm gonna go have a rest. Bit of sand, just keep your throttle on. Keep the throttle on. Are you okay? You through it? Yeah, yeah. Carry on. We're gonna stop here. Okay. Well, we're at the Yengo National Park at the moment, right smack bang in the middle of it. Fantastic, hey? That's great. Yeah, and look, maybe that is an indication of the kind of artwork we'll see. Is it hot enough? Oof, hot enough. It's getting up there. You should have taken your jacket off. Yeah, then I have to put it back on again. That's true. It's a bit hazy, but it's beautiful, hey, Jono? Yeah, definitely. You can see the mountain in the background. Yeah. Mount, Mount Yengo is mm. 668 meters. Right, so that's where we're heading. Let's see if we can uh, see some Aboriginal art. Right, so we've done the Finchley Lookout. Now we're heading off to go and find that Aboriginal art. It's by the campsite, as I said, hey? Yeah, just before the campsite. Just before the campsite. Okay. Yeah. He said, look out for some logs on the road. Or yeah. along the side of the road. Yeah. There we are, Johnny. Here it is, here, mate. Oh, there you go. That was easy. All right. Let's see if we can find this. Have you seen anything, Jono? Yeah. yeah, I'm just looking around. It's um. Here, uh, here it is. Yeah, check it out. Oh wow, look at that. Yeah. That's fantastic, hey? Yeah, thousands of years old. Absolutely, gee whiz, it's actually weathered quite well, considering. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Okay, let's get some cool breezes through these hot jackets and bodies of ours. Sounds good. All right, this is going downhill, so just slowly on the brake, front brake, and then it turns to the right, Jono. Yeah. Jono and I are having this debate. I'm saying that this is an extreme sport because we off-road in the bush on a motorcycle that weighs over 200 kilograms, and we're riding in the bush, in the dirt, in the sand, going up hills, and he says, no, it would only be an extreme sport if we're doing 100 k's an hour. I'm not sure I agree with that. Have you changed your yeah, mind I think it's just more of a, no, it's more of a leisure activity with just a bit more effort involved. Right. And look at this that we're going over. I think it's, uh, yeah. I think it could be classed so as fairly, um, cha even if it's not extreme, maybe challenging. Yeah, so a challenging activity. Right, challenging sport. Yep. Challenging sport. There we go. Alright, I'll stick with extreme. And I think maybe, given my age, I'm entitled to call it extreme. That's probably fair. There's a little bit of sand in. A little bit of a jiggle. Oh yeah. Did you, did you do oh, a bit of a jiggle? I, I, no, I just went around it. <laughs> you just went around it. <laughs> yeah. Hey, the wisdom of a 25-year-old. That's right. So this is not meant to be a professional review at all, but I've had this jacket now for over a year and I've ridden in it uh, on the road, in the bush, um, dirt, and in the rain. And it's just proven to be a really fantastic jacket. I guess the main reason I bought it is because it's Gore-Tex. 
So you don't have to worry about if it's going to rain or if it's going to be hot. You just take one jacket with you. The beauty is it's got all these beautiful vents that you hold open. It's extremely comfortable. It's got all the armor you'd want in the shoulders, the back and the sides. And in all honesty, it is a jacket that I personally would recommend you get. If you're in this kind of um, price range, there you can see the back armor as well. It took me a long time to buy this jacket because it is so expensive and I had so many false starts. But eventually when I plucked up the courage, had the money and bought it, it was a purchase I really do not regret making. If you are doing this kind of riding like we are, or even just out and about, and you want something that's durable, waterproof, 100% waterproof, this is the jacket I would suggest you get. This is the Badlands. Uh, you don't have to go to the extreme of the Badlands, but um, definitely, that little sign, I guess here as well, is quality. So do consider this jacket. Can you believe how still and quiet and peaceful it is out here, hey? Yeah, it is. All you can hear is the cicadas. If it wasn't for the cicadas, it would just be dead, dead yeah. quiet and peaceful. Mm. Oh, That's man. great. All right, let's head home. Let's go. So we off the dirt, heading home. I was just saying to Jono, you know, in the past it was, let's get out there and ride, and now it's almost a case of, let's just get the tar done with so we can get on the dirt. Anyway, a really great day of riding with my son. He really enjoys it, and uh, we've just had a fantastic day. It's 30 degrees. We've just re-wetted our aggressor cools, and so we nice and cool and chilly on the way home. And uh, we should be home in time for lunch. Thanks, Jono. Another great day, mate.